as a destination, Kangaroo Island is uh, a really peaceful place. The sounds of the bush, the kookaburras waking us up in the morning, the smell of eucalyptus, you know, all that sensory stuff that comes with being in the outdoors. As guides, we've got to just take a bit of a, uh, a lead and, and tell people just to stop, listen and, and really be in that space. The way we used to explore as, as children, my family moved to Kangaroo Island as a, a lifestyle choice in the, uh, the late 60s. Grew up on a, a farm which we had thousands of acres out the back with rolling hills and lots of bush in the valleys. If we wanted to see our neighbours, they lived a, a while away, we'd jump on a horse or, uh, or on the bike or just head over the hills and take a picnic with you. Sometimes you have people saying, man, how do you live out here, out here with no one? If only they knew, you know, you'd say, well, it's a pretty frantic social life here if you uh, take all the opportunities. It's a, a family business. The people with whom we, we interact socially, we're often seeing the same people with our guests. So it might be a local artist or it might be one of the researchers. We're celebrating the best that the community offers and uh, doing our best to share that with our guests. One of the benefits of a guided tour, particularly with wildlife, is just that intimate knowledge of the landscape, the wildlife habitat, and also the behaviour of the animals in different conditions. Yeah, we were often just parked on the side of the road and watching wallabies and then all the self-drive cars are zoom, 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 zoom going past, heading for the National Park because that's where all the wildlife is. So changing our behaviour, following that of the animals so that we can showcase things in their best light. We don't do anything which is captive. We don't do any wildlife handling. It's very much us moving quietly through the bush or on the beach or whatever habitat we're exploring with our guests and explaining how we need to behave so that we get the best out of the experience. One of the things I guess really enjoy is the, uh, the hospitality. To really have a, a restaurant setting out in the middle of the wilderness. It might be on a, a mate's farm where we've got a, a, a canopy set up and a, a big trestle table, or it might be a picnic style on a cliff top. Proper crockery, cutlery, beautiful homemade chutneys and dressings and things. We know who made the cheese, we know who made the wine, we know who baked the bread. You're literally tasting the islands. Yeah, having patchy uh, coverage with our phones works because uh, Everyone's on, on their devices all the time and you know, focusing on virtual reality. We want to go absolute reality. And then people you know, make that breakthrough and say, I'm really enjoying just being here, being in the moment. That connection back with um, one another in terms of personal relationships and with the, uh, the broader world. One of the things that we, we've done with our team of guides is go out into the fire ground and constructing a series of tunnels which is augmenting the, uh, the habitat of a critically endangered uh, little carnivore called a sooty dunnart that's only found on the western end of Kangaroo Island. So we've gone out there and building these tunnels so they've got places where they can get away from predators. On each side there are paired cameras so when the, uh, these little critters come along in the night and they go past the camera and then take a selfie so we're able to go into the, the refuge areas with our guests, pick up the cameras and then download and just flick through all sorts of animals that people have never get a chance to see because they're nocturnal and they're tiny. And by going in there and uh, having a donation to that group, that's actually supporting the ongoing monitoring of endangered species. As nature guides, we really have an opportunity and I think a responsibility to get people back in touch with the natural world. And if you can't experience that in your everyday, then it makes it even more important the time that you can spend when you're on, um, on a trip somewhere. You know, we like to think that when people go home, they're going to become you know, really, really keen to find ways to reintroduce that piece of nature into their, their everyday life.